We're back at it. Today, we're going to be taking a look at your videos. You, you watching. We might be looking at your video on our live stream, and we're going to check out ways in which you might be able to improve, whether it's your intros, whether it's adding some more B-roll, whether it's your outros. We're going to look at as much as we can from as many people as we can. If you're watching this after the fact, it won't be your channel, unfortunately. You had to be here for the live stream, which happened at 2 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Uh, but don't worry. If you subscribe, hit the notification bell. Hopefully, you can join us for the next one and submit your channel while we're live. And for those of you who are here live and been waiting, thank you. Thank you all so much. Let's bring in Mr. Rob Olson. Hey, Dan. Hey, everybody. Uh, I sounded like Dr. Nick Riviera of The Simpsons just then. A um, couple more time zones for you. It's 11 a.m. PT. It is 7 p.m. BST, British summertime. I don't know what time it is elsewhere. Do let us know in the chat. And do you want to know what, Dana? I'm I'm both feeling excited and nervous because I think this is a fantastic brand new idea that we've come up with. But I've never done this before. I'm like, I, 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 like, am I going to be able to give the right advice? Don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a bit lazy when I do my own video editing. Like, oof. Yeah, there's all sorts of thoughts, theories, experiences uh, running through my head right now. But I'm looking forward to it. See, this is how I approach it. Because I'm also, I can be kind of lazy with my video editing. I think all of us can be guilty of that. However, because they're not my videos, yeah, the onus yeah. is on you to take the advice however you want to take it. You know, if we recommend a bunch of changes and you want to do 10% of that or 0% of that or minus 10% of that, that's all up to you. That's no skin off my nose. So we're going to go all in. We're going to like tell you all the things we would have done and hopefully it can be of use to you. All of the things a perfect creator would do. Like, <laughs> I, I did the quotes. We, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to scrutinize as hard-nosed viewers. But we also understand how long some of this stuff takes to do and whether or not I can be bothered to do it myself. <laughs> so the way this works is a little bit different. On Tuesdays, we have a form where you would go into the description. You'd fill it out to submit your channel. Here, what we're going to do is use this random generator tool. It's called the giveaway tool. And the way it works is once I hit this button, if you say hashtag review at any point in this live stream, once I hit the button, for the rest of the live stream, you will be in this drawing. You can't submit multiple times. You can only use the hashtag one time, whether you use it 100 times or not. It only works once. And from there, we'll be having this just pick the channels for us. We're going to look at probably one video per person that comes up unless we get really interested in something and we want to dive a little bit deeper. And we're going to be looking at like the first 30 seconds and from there maybe looking at the video as a whole to see what could be done. Uh, we're not worried too much about titles and thumbnails, but Tuesdays we go real deep on those. So be sure to join us for those live streams. And uh, we also have a new twist to this. Uh, last week we didn't do this, but if you are in what we call vidIQ Max, which is our group Ooh. coaching uh, segment of our company, uh, you may have had an opportunity to fill out a form. And we took five people from vidIQ Max, and we're going to look at their videos throughout this live stream. So they've guaranteed themselves, just for being in vidIQ Max and seeing the form go up, they've guaranteed themselves some uh, time from us. And we're going to be taking a look at some of these videos from these channels a little bit later on. So. If you're in VidIQ Max, which we'll talk about more in a little while, uh, that was something you could have done too. And they can submit multiple times because they can use hashtag review. If they didn't fill out the form, for example, well, well anyway, now I'm complicating it. And they, <laughs> they could submit again if they wanted to because they're in VidIQ Max. So if we do this again with more people submitting on the form, who knows? It's two chances in the future. All right. I'm going to roll it though. I think everyone's yeah. been very patient. Already 67 people have used the hashtag. And if that's one, if you, that's you, Please relax now. You don't need to use it anymore. 60, 79 people, a lot of people using it right now. We have slow mode on just to keep the spam down. But uh, also, as we're doing this live stream, if you have any questions, feel free to put hashtag question in front of it. And if we spot that, we'll kind of grab it, put it in the background. We'll also take questions kind of throughout the stream a little bit. We'll answer some of your YouTube-related questions as well. But for the most part, we're going to be spending the next two hours reviewing videos from you fine creators. So we'll let a few more of these populate right now. Uh, there's almost 300 people watching. I wonder how many likes we have. Does that match? Oh, no, we have a third of no, that. No. 144 <laughs> likes. <laughs> well, hopefully when you're done hitting, when you're done typing review, you can also hit that like button. Help us out. All right, I'm going to draw it. This will be the first 
channel. Now you missed. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Vox virus. All right. We're going to be checking out this channel first. And we the should one... also um, add the caveat. If your channel name is quite generic, we may struggle to find your channel just as a word of one. And we apologize in advance if we can't find your channel because of that. Yeah, we will only scroll so far before giving up. Uh, so that is not necessarily your fault. A lot of people, when it comes to a popular name, could have the same name. So we're looking at a channel with 31 subscribers here. Looks like they've been uploading for about a year. So let's take a look at their latest video and let it play for like the first 30 seconds and see yep. what we can spot. I blame Undertale for ruining a lot of games for me. Being able to charm <laughs> monsters into being your friends. So now, when I play anything else, it's just not the same. Like when I played Stardew for the first time, I just kept hesitating, being like, why do I have to kill the cute little slime balls? And although I absolutely love Stardew, it just stunk that if I didn't kill them, I couldn't progress. So when I was brainstorming ideas for the last week of summer, I came up with the concept of using potions as your only weapon. And while I was drafting out potion types, that's when I hit me. This is where I can make my own Undertale inspired combat. I decided to make two potion types, humane or lethal potion. Interesting. Mm. So I mm. wasn't expecting them to be like a game developer. But it says indie devlog at the back of the title. So now that I'm reading the title again, I just read the first part, but I don't want to kill them. What do you think? This was interesting. I thought that the intro in terms of um, editing and voiceover delivery of the, the script that I think they wrote was uh, fair, quite well polished. I'm still 37 seconds in. I'm like, what, a quarter into this video now, and I'm still not entirely sure what the premise of the the video of a challenge is maybe that's my lack of understanding about the games that have been described but i felt as if it needed to be explained more simply and quickly what they were trying to do but dan you being a gamer familiar with stardew valley you may understand a little bit more what's going on here i it took me see the way they tell the story wasn't bad like it I was kind of getting more and more hooked on it. I didn't want to stop at 30 seconds, if that's any uh, help to you, because I like the premise where they're going. I like how they compared two games that are very popular to like a similar audience, Undertale and Stardew, I think share a lot of overlap there. And it's kind of cool, the differences that you point out, right? So even if you haven't played those games, you've kind of given me context. So all that was there, I guess where where rob is getting lost and where i was a bit lost at the very beginning was that we read the title as but i don't want to kill them which is very vague we don't really know yeah. what we're going to get it's a it's a development vlog but we didn't you know it, it wasn't clear what part of game development you were about to like go into so it was the combat system so it's kind of i know we said we weren't going to talk about titles and thumbnails too much but sometimes this is what happens I, I think a title and thumbnail that got me more ready for that experience just now would have been really helpful if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But once um, I got into it, I got into it. Yeah. Can you replay the first 15 seconds of this, Dan? Um, let's have another go for, for my benefit. I blame Undertale for ruining a lot of games for me. Being able to charm monsters into being your friends. So now when I play anything else, it's just not the same. Like when I played Stardew for the first time, I just kept hesitating. Being Pause. I think, you see, I think this is what all of that should come after explaining what I'm going to do in the video. Which is it's something along the lines. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, create two potions for two different games, and it's and I but I don't want them to get killed or something along those lines. It felt like she was trying to explain the the supporting reasons for making this video. Yes. Or anything else. That's yes. where I th think the, the the storytelling is a little lost on me. You you almost took the advi my advice that I give a lot of people of don't use an intro a little too far because now we we missed a context bit. What I don't want to see people doing is, hey guys, I'm Vox Virus. Welcome back to another video. In the last sure. video, that's what I don't like to see. But we kind of chopped too much off because at the front, like you said, like if they would have said, have you ever played a video game and you're just so upset about having to kill monsters? Well, I might have a solution for that. So there like you go. That, yeah, that, that's a good intro. That's that eight. Right. What, that took about six seconds to explain that. that yeah. Felt a nice little setup would have been helpful. And the reason we're so hung up on this is because it's the difference between us dropping off right now at 14 seconds or sticking through the whole video because we get in and we get the premise immediately. 
Uh, and I'll always go back to Mr. Beast. If you pull up any of his videos, he gives you the first thing he hits you with is the premise. And he's an excellent storyteller. All that's in the video and done very well, but it's always him shouting down the lens what's going to happen in the video with text to support it. Not that you need that, but that's that's kind of what was missing here. Dan, can you track along the timeline? Don't click just so that we see the thumbnails. Yeah, keep going. So it looks like there's a lot of B-roll uh, shifting, scene changes, graphics coming in. That's all good for me to see. Um, but if you look at the thumbnail, I'm seeing the creator, presumably the hero of this video, or the, the, the hero of a channel, but it looks like they're not in the video at all. So my question is, is it necessary to have you in the thumbnail if you're not actually appearing in the in the video itself? Like, what was that? Like this, I, the text would need to be a little bit different in terms of color and size, but I think this is a better thumbnail because if it's, if it was paired with a title like, like uh, in my game, you don't kill monsters or something like that, it, it would help support that a little bit. But I see what you went for. You have a title and a thumbnail that do work together. It's just now it's the pitch to somebody who's never seen your channel before. They don't really know what they're getting into. It, it leaves me with too many questions. And I think that's where, we, you know, we get 38 views. We're just not, we're not pulling in enough clicks because of that combo. But yeah, good point. My, my guess is that the audience retention uh, stabilizes probably pretty quickly after the first 30 seconds uh, when people are invested because it looks like the production value is pretty good and the presentation of the content is good. But the, as you said, Dan, the thumbnail title and the intro, I got lost. I, pre I appreciate that I'm a bit of a layman here, uh, but I, I, I may have been clicking off. Um, so I think it's almost like the, the intro is bringing down the rest of the video, which is, uh, which is of a good standard. Yeah. So, I mean, best of luck. This is a really strong start. Uh, I, w I wish you luck in your game dev journeys. That's not an easy field to go into at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, it looks like you're uh, already, there's a lot of improvements from where you were at with your thumbnails. Yeah, custom titles. thumbnails uh, in use, uh, which is a good start. I guess that's, I've just started there using their <clears throat> own face in the thumbnails as maybe an experiment for the last couple of videos as well. Yeah, and and that can work too, but maybe maybe your face cam should be on during the videos as well, just to kind of help with that bit of context too. Uh, but okay, we're gonna look at our first VidIQ Max submitted channel. All right. Uh, so VidIQ Max is our group coaching product here. It's a brand new service where we've launched at VidIQ. There's a link down below if you want to go check it out. And you have access with VidIQ Max to YouTube mentors who are doing live lessons twice a month, if not more. And sometimes myself, like I'm in there, Rob Wilson's in there. Uh, every now and again, we come in, we answer your questions, we talk on a YouTube topic, and you've access to a 24 hour discord full of other members of VidIQ Max. And there's a ton of value here. Uh, it is a YouTube mem mentorship program. So if you're looking for somebody to really take a look at your channel and really get in there, uh, you can join VidIQ Max. The plans are down below. And uh, yeah, so this is this is one of the folks in the VidIQ Max program, and I want to look at their latest video. Presuming they've been through a couple of calls now in VidIQ Max, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're, what their content looked like prior to VidIQ Max, but uh, we'll just kind of see what they're doing these days. Five weird moments, eh? Speed one is a plant. Five weird, five weird moments in plants versus zombies speed running. So they did say they were a speed run channel. It is in their uh, channel name as well. Yep. So this is interesting. Speedrunners of plants versus zombies play the game so much that they frequently. Uh oh, I buffered it. I'm sorry. This didn't happen last week, believe it or not. Dun dun let me, dun. Let me refresh the tab. Speedrunners of plants versus zombies play the game so much that they frequently find moments in the game that defy all logic. Here are five of those moments. The pole vaulting zombie is notorious for having. Oh, wow. This is like really struggling all of a sudden. All right, so my advice, Dan, is take some of these tabs off of this window and then bring the tab, tabs back in um, when when we play them, because that seems to work better. Oh, boy. I was hoping to, like, group them like, like this. Well, now I'm just, I'm just making a mess here. Uh-oh. You're putting me under too much pressure. All right. <laughs> all right, took off all the extra vidIQ Max tabs. So we'll put these in their own little bubble for now. 
minus that out. Thanks, Chrome. Man, this, now, better, this better work now. I hope it doesn't. I'm going to see like a full head box. But this moment. Oh, we got that to begin him. Thanks. <laughs> walk, walk, walk. Sorry, technical difficulties. Here we go. Speedrunners of plants versus zombies play the game so much that they frequently find moments in the game that defy all logic. Here are five of those. Dang. This video, what did you, what's this, a 4K video? Like, what did uh, you this, do? This is in 12K using a red camera. Frequently find moments in the game that defy all logic. Here are five of those moments. I, this is the most frustrated I've ever been on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> is it just this video? Maybe try another one. Okay, let's yeah. That's an hour long. I, that might have been a live stream. Do the um, do the one thousand. Yeah, do that one. Can I beat the first survival level in Plants vs Zombies with just purple plants? The answer may shock. May shock you, I presume. It answers my chakras. Right. Let's see if we can solve these technical difficulties, Dan. Because I'm gonna maybe have um. <clears throat> my screen sharing as a backup so i'm going to try and bring this up one second all right sorry all person speed runs okay all right videos right Trouble right so nice first survival nice. level in plants versus zombies with just purple plants the answer may that's so bizarre all right let's check it out all right, so I've got the um, one, the, the the latest video, which was okay. from like a day ago. Mm -hmm. of plants versus zombies play the game so much that they frequently find moments in the game that defy all logic. Here are five of those moments. The pole vaulting zombie is not... So I think just from the very first 10 seconds, if you just look at this screen here, Speedrunners of plants versus zombies play the game so much that they frequently find moments in the game that defy all logic. This is kind of a redundant screen at the moment because it's not showing me anything, any weird moments. This mm. is just a person playing the game. It, we should really try and find two weird moments that, that they could probably tease in the first five seconds um, at this point. So I feel as if there may be a missed opportunity there. But you have told us fairly quickly what the rest of the video is going to be about. Here are five of those moments. The pole vaulting zombie is notorious for having a very peculiar hitbox. But this moment in Captain Colonel's All Puzzles Run is one of the strangest I've ever seen. What? What? Okay. Speaking of the all... Okay, then what do you think? That's, so that was the man in the first 30 seconds who were able to tell us what the vi video was about and have one odd moment. I, I do appreciate that they zoomed in. I haven't played this game before, so it's kind of it's hard for me to know what is a weird moment. And in that situation, even if you have played the game, it might be hard to know what you're having people look at. So you you did remedy that right away by zooming in. And it was kind of clear to see like, oh, it went through that object. That's kind of weird. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I think that's pretty uh I think that's pretty good. It looked like that brought us into the next chapter as well. You've broken it up into chapters. Um I I I will say. So it's a it's a channel about speed running in general. So I think they're what they're not doing speed runs from what we can tell. They're kind of telling stories about speed runs, yeah. and that's an interesting concept. Uh, it's just for a speed running channel. I don't know. It just the video feels like it moves a bit slow. If that makes sense, it I don't I think there's or missing some excitement or something. It it might we might be like it might not be slowness because a two minute video. It's not that it's, you know. It's obviously moving at a good pace, but it's your excitement as you're narrating. It's something's like, I think if you could like turn you up just a little bit in terms of like the the ampedness, like that guy. Yeah, and many of these screens are quite static. Like you said, it's not. Um, I think with so much going up happening on screen, it needs to zoom in on the particular interesting thing that's happening you know like they did it with the um pole vaulting zombie very briefly at the beginning um 
I think there was maybe a missed opportunity there. So continue to track through the timeline, as you can see, it's always just showing the main screen without zooming in on anything. Uh, and I feel as if there may be a missed opportunity to show us something specific of interest. Yeah. And maybe arrows as well, pointing at stuff. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you could have a couple sound effects accompanying those arrows. Um, this was, as far as I'm aware, the first instance of this occurring in a speed run. Since this clip, it has been achieved by a handful of other runners, but I have oh. no idea why this happens. We got to talk uh, about that. Just before we um, do, Dan, I just want to look at this video because this has 1,300 views, which is yeah. an outlier. And I'm wondering why that is. So let's maybe try the first 15 seconds. I think, first of all, the thumbnail is clearer. So what's I think happening. the title is clearer on this one. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I noticed that as well. Yeah. Shaw has changed oh. the Wi-Fi game <laughs> with next generation Wi-Fi 6 technology. Them damn adverts. Uh, I've level in plants versus zombies with just purple plants. The answer may shock you. So, now that is such a such a better intro, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. you're focusing on the theme, which is purple plants, asking a question, and then that classic plants, formula of putting text on screen that matches your narration. Yeah, that's a much better intro, and I think that's probably why this video has a little bit more audience retention, my guess, and more views. Yeah, it's. I, I think the pitch of the video was a bit better in the title and thumbnail. And I agree completely with the intro as well. It's a, I, but it might be also an easier setup. It may be a topic that's much easier for you to like broach because it's easier to explain. I'm guessing that this is the creator's own challenge because I think on the other video that he made, it was a, a collection of other people's videos and weird moments happening. And so I think he's able to control the, the environment of this video a bit more with what he's doing. And then, yeah, there's more fun stuff being added to the video as well. Yeah. This is kind of when you put stakes in your videos. It's kind of what we were talking about uh, days ago. Like, add stakes to your gaming videos. And that's kind of what they did. I'm going to try to beat the game, but with the restriction of only using this one item. Mm -hmm. And that's when, whenever we talk about adding stakes to your video to add that extra bit of intrigue, that's exactly what they did. The, it paid off in terms of the views. The intro was really strong. It's not a big time commitment. If you're, if you're new to this creator, you've never heard of them before. Well, yeah, sure. Why not? Three minutes. Sure. Okay. You want to talk about something at the end here, Dan? Is that Yes. Right? So be very careful about end screens like this because you were not done talking and if I was really invested so in your video and no I saw that pop up, why this happens? I, uh, right. It's it's an invitation to like leave, right? Like yeah. I didn't I didn't know I was at the end of the video, but those popped up before it was done. So just be sure to put those. I would say in a natural place, you know, to to where you don't mind losing people because I I don't know. Maybe not everyone thinks this way. Maybe this is this again. It's just one person's opinion, but I do feel like. As soon as the end screen pops up, it's people are waiting to go to their next thing, and that just tells them, "Oh yeah, we're done." But you weren't done talking. How we've been doing this uh, recently on the VidIQ channel is we've been a lot more intentional, whereby we've come to the conclusion of a video that we're talking about. In this case, five weird moments in Plants vs Zombies speedrunning, and then we'll say. Now, if you found this interesting, and if you want to check out five unfortunate moments where this zombie pogo sticks off the entire game or whatever, check out this video over here and have only one call to action and be very intentional with it. Tell the viewer exactly what they should be doing next and why. Rather than, as you say, Dan, just having these calls to action on the end without even finishing what you're talking about. Um, the chances are that viewer is, because they've got to the end of your video, they're pretty invested probably satisfied that may be ready to watch something next but you've got to really encourage them and tell them why you should do that yeah 100 we're going to look at another one here from those of you right. hitting putting review yeah. in the chat uh we have 340 entries so 342 now let's see who we get <sighs> still a little little too soon the seven fingered man all right, let's check out okay. your channel. Uh, I'll just pop up to new tab here. Oh, I gotta go to YouTube to do it. I had a YouTube tab open earlier. 
Yep. What? All right. So it looks like uh, an anime review channel, I want to say. And why don't we go ahead and check out your latest video? What anime should you watch for the spring 2022 anime season? That's the question that every seasonal anime fan is trying to figure out right now. But lucky for you guys, I've done research on every single anime that's airing in spring 2022. And I'm here to let you guys know that there are some absolutely amazing anime airing next season. And there's also quite a few that I think are going under the radar for a lot of people. I potentially think they could be anime of the season, but no one's really talking about them. Without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what i found when i concluded my research i like to start things so it looks like they planned that for 30 seconds b-roll i need to see some b-roll yeah i i think because you do bring it in in the corner here even that once in a while would have been good i don't know if you ever take over the screen with it or not it looks like it's just talking head and then occasionally you get the the screen in the corner um but is there a reason for that? I mean, is it is it maybe a copyright thing? Yeah, a copyright there's a fear? copyright thing going on there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, even even having like... So I'm going to go through the top animes that are coming out. So just little bits from the trailers, like popping up next to you here and there. That would have been... You know, that would have helped. Because yeah, it was like a lot of looking at you kind of breaking down the video. And d I do appreciate the way you explained everything. But you did basically say a longer version of the title. Yeah, it was, there was a lot of telling, not showing there. And if if we want to be ruthless about this, I would try and turn that intro into ten seconds or less. And don't tell, don't tell the audience everything. Explain every single facet. I I've been guilty of this in the past, and it's something I'm trying to experiment with now. Telling them less and showing them more. Um, let's just. Can you just play the intro again, Dan? Uh, maybe not all 30 seconds, but let me just hear it again. What anime should you watch for the spring 2022 anime season? That's the question that every seasonal anime fan is trying to figure out right now. But lucky for pause you it, pause guys. It. So, pause it. So you, he didn't need that second section. Like that's what well, every question, that's a question every an, anime fan is watching right now. Well, yeah, it is. That's why I'm watching this video. Um, carry on. I've done research on every single anime that's airing in spring 2022. And I'm here to let you guys know that we don't we don't need to know that. Um or that should have been the only thing you said at the beginning. Because yeah. it's impressive. But we have two intros right now, right? Like yeah. the first thing they said, and then that, which is both are good, but I think I would have picked one. Yeah. Carry on. There are some absolutely amazing anime airing next season. And there's also quite a few that I think are going under the radar for a lot of people. I potentially think they could be anime of the season, but no one's really talking about them. Without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what I found when I concluded my research. Yeah, like you said, Dan, I think like you could use three sentences from that intro and it still makes sense. I know you're kind of adding a little extra layer on top each time but it's probably not necessary um, because it's taking, it's taking too long to get into the, to the, to the meat of a video. I would suggest. Yeah, absolutely. If someone, I was trying to pull up the comment here. Uh, there's been a couple of questions I've been grabbing too. Uh, mm -hmm. Like this person says, I think it's actually good. Just some B roll missing. And I agree. Like it's not bad. Uh, where, where it's mostly... well presented, it's well right. presented and well scripted. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong there. Yeah. I'm, I'm, as I say, I'm being I'm being the ruthless viewer here. Yes, yes, we're we're, we're min maxing, right? That's what we're doing. We're trying to make the intros that are already good. Like everything we've seen today so far is good, but we want to make them even better. We're here to try and take it to the next level. Uh, now I'm curious about their outro. Uh, let's let's see as we get to. So well, uh, hang on, Dan. Can we just like watch the next 30, 30 seconds of the worship? Yeah, okay. this chapter. Yeah. I like to start things out by pointing out a couple anime I think you guys should avoid at all costs. And this season, there's really two that I think are going to be absolutely awful. And it's mainly based on the way they look. First, we have a stab life greatest. Okay, pause it, pause it. Story of the setting. You know what you could do? Like, instead of 48 seconds in, like, they could have started with, I think this is the worst anime this year because of these reasons. 
you know, and you spend like 10 to 15 seconds with that intro, and then you go into, all right, now let's take a look at the best and worst animations we're going to see in 2022. And so you, you see how that could have all been condensed down and the video's already well into the the meat of it after mm -hmm. 48 seconds. Yeah. Uh, let's look at sure. the end here. Or Shield Hero. Overall, I think this season has something for absolutely everybody, regardless of what your taste is. Hell, it has six sports anime this season. So sports anime fans are eating well. And I, for one, can't wait for these series to start airing. If you want more content from me, down in the description below is going to be my Twitch, Twitter, and TikTok. There's plenty Not too of much. Yeah. Too many calls it, to action. Don't it, bother with any of that. I skipped to the perfect point because as soon as these pictures went away, they started to wind down and I could feel it. I could feel mm -hmm. wanting to click away. Way that those two could pass either Spy Family or Shield Hero. Overall, I think that overall, and so we're getting into this like outro, and you you have like seconds. My mouse is already moving. People's thumb is already moving over to like the next thing, and by the time you're plugging TikTok and everything else, like they're long gone, you know. So it's just like long outros can make the end of your retention graph drop kind of early and that all plays to the watch time and the, the overall percentage right though especially the shorter your video is if your intro if your outro is too long you've lost a chunk of people way too early that's it's probably fine we're talking about the last 20 seconds or so but i do think that it's very very obvious the video's ending and the trick i've been personally trying is to make it so no one knows my video is about to end it just ends in a snap it's just gone yeah. you know and i because i want that retention graph to be as flat as possible Let's, let's keep it going until the end. Those platforms. And I want to hear from you guys. What are your top three anime that you're excited for this season? This is my most recent video. And over here is a video handpicked specifically for you. And as always, have a great day. Don't love or don't hide it. You know? look, at, look at all that. There's four calls to action there. Mm -hmm. And the your best sales pitch was, this is my most recent video. This is one YouTube recommends. You have an opportunity there to send whoever's watching to the video you want them to watch next. So mm -hmm. really experiment with saying, you should go watch uh, the ranking of the Kings next because um, because it was it was one of my favorite shows of the autumn 20, yeah. of, the, yeah, of the winter 2022 animations. And you'll find out why if you watch it. Uh, so yeah. It's what, what that does is it creates what we call a binge session. You know, people, watch a second video from you in the same session they watched a video from you already and that's a signal to youtube that tells youtube this creator i found i want to watch multiple videos of theirs at the same time which means the next time they come onto youtube if you've uploaded a video it's in their face and if you haven't uploaded a video something from your back catalog is in their face because they're like oh the other day you really liked the seven fingered man and i'm going to show you something else from them and that happens so much easier if you can get people to jump to the next video. So instead of all that call to action stuff, I think you'll notice your subscriber numbers jump and views on your other platforms jump eventually if you build more fans by getting people hooked on your content. So try to get rid of all that other fluff and only point to one thing. There's four things on the screen right now. I can only pick one of these. There's four things and the only one you were willing to really tell me about was this one. Only do that one then for sure. And try to get me to go there don't let me know the video's ending right here when you know over here is some juicy nugget that like oh i totally missed i left already you know how many comments do they have done just curious 16 comments 16. all right so so 10 percent conversion rate or a little over which is not well, isn't too bad i didn't notice that they um asked the viewers a question at the very end and again it's probably already too late you know you've got four calls to actions and then you're asking them to uh, engage with a comment is there some way you can insert that comment in the first minute or 90 seconds and you know you'll have to rephrase the question it can't be what are your three favorite animes if you haven't introduced them um but you know like it could be like what what is your favorite anime um type because boy have we got a, a selection for you in spring 2022 yeah. There was a lot of backloading of things for the viewer to do, and it ends up being a paralysis of choice. They'll just do none of that and, and move on. 
Yeah. Uh, so we're going to pick another one, and then we're going to take a couple of your excellent questions. There's been some really interesting ones. Uh, so let's see here who's next. I must confess, Dan, I forgot to start any questions. So I, I've, you've I picked a few. And I forgot to press a button, so I'm going to be well behind. <laughs> Spy fix. You ever notice your cursor gets lost in the confetti? And like uh, find yeah. their name? Just a little bit. All right. Oh, it looks like a shorts channel. It is a shorts channel. All right. Okay. All right. So it looks like they're doing Minecraft shorts based on the banner. Let's look at the latest one. We're going to be shifting gears here. It's going to be way different. Potato. Oh, certain things you just can't refuse. She want to ride me like a cruise. I'm going to mute it just because I think it's only the music. Either way, it, it froze on me. Let me refresh. To me, my friend built a big potato farm to get money on some kind of server. Ah, shoot. I'm sorry. Let me go to a different one. Maybe, maybe I can have better luck here. So it looks like they just use music, which you should do. Like YouTube Shorts gives you music to use. Do you want to try to pull this one up? This is like... It's fine. Yeah. One year of boxing shorts. Hashtag viral. Okay, I think I'm ready, done. If you wanna Okay. Share on mine. All right. Let's try the first one again. Oh man. I had to wait a lot a long time for the payoff, which was very, very quick. Yeah. Then you left in the dust. Unless I stuck. Oh, so that's a pet. Is that good, Dan? I mean, it, it's, it looks impressive. It looks like you spent a lot of time building that, but the payoff is like a flash. It's just gone. We had to pause it to like see it, you know? And, and that's, that's not what you want. Like, the, the, here's the problem. Like, so with YouTube shorts, you have a fraction of a second to like hold somebody's attention. And every part of every little bit of your video could make them swipe away if they feel like they're not getting anything out of it. Because when you find shorts, you find them on the short shelf and you can just keep swiping. Like if I'll, I'll make an attempt here. So if I go to shorts and it just shows me stuff, swipe, swipe. Like if none of these videos do enough and all of them are doing great. If none of these videos do enough to like hold my attention, I'm gone already. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think your video, I can't believe it makes me go back like this. Your video has this, this problem where like there's music that doesn't feel super relevant to what's going on and it just says wait for it you're, you're like begging me to stay and then i'm like all right i'll check it out and then it's like i could blink and miss the payoff at the end and then i have to watch it because youtube shorts doesn't really let you scrub through so i have to watch it all the way through again to see like well what was it like and that maybe that's what you were hoping would happen but i think by then people would have just swiped away so understand that like it if if it doesn't need to be there in shorts it shouldn't be there. Your short should be as short as possible. Excuse me. And I think that the setup was too long especially when you compare it to the payoff. Let's try the Drag Dragon Ball power on Minecraft. Cuz it's got 2500 views. <laughs> Buffering on me again. I I didn't get okay. that at all. I put your screen on so you could. Oh, sorry. Will you play? All oh, right. Hang on. Right. Do it again. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeesh. So what was that then? Like uh, a power up of some kind? I, I think so. It it did well, and maybe maybe people who understand Dragon Ball got it. I I don't know. It was a bit jarring. Maybe it was too short. Maybe there wasn't enough setup in that one. Mm -hmm. It's a it's hard to say. Uh, the subscribe thing though, that's another problem with shorts. Yeah. No. 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 It, if you do that, you're inviting people to leave, and on with shorts, that's the last thing you want to do. 
you want people to watch more than once. And if people know the video's over because of your subscribe call to action, they know whether they subscribe or not, they know the video's over. They don't, they know they don't need to watch a second time. But what the cheeky thing you can do with shorts is you can trick people into watching more than once. And that's that's where you get your 200 to 300% retention rates. And that's where you get a lot of views. Maybe something happened so quick in that one. And that's why people were watching it so much. 2.5K views a few days ago. Possibly. Hmm. It looks like that was their most successful by far. I think, Dan, what's probably worth doing here is, um, well, I'm going to try this. It might not work. Uh, you know, when you were showing all of your um, shots, they all had something really um, common about them all. Um, yeah, it's not happening for me, <laughs> which is frustrating. Can you go back to your screen? and? Um, yeah. Just start the shorts. Sorry. Loop, so to speak. Aimbot trick. See how like I was intrigued by this because they were doing they were they're doing something to a keyboard. I wish it wouldn't keep buffering. It was working so well earlier. What I'm noticing on uh, on a lot of yours uh, beforehand was that there was they were doing the um not text to speech, but also uh, almost like um, his captions were on screen, and it was going at a really, really fast rate, but a rate that we could follow it. Uh, and I was wondering if that might be something that the uh, the creator could uh, test on theirs as well. You know what's cool about this one that I've been watching for a bit now? Mm -hmm. It it's like just long enough and just short enough at the same time. So like it's short enough to be short, but like. So I saw, I remember this guy, but it took so long to get back to him that it could have looped. I could have watched the same thing twice and not really known it, you know? But I, I like the concept. Without the sound or anything, I, I can see this person just making random people, just throwing a ball to them while they're walking down the sidewalk. And yeah, there's, with these shorts, not only is it the text on the screen as they talk, but it's that like intriguing concept. What do you call this in English? Sell it up, yeah. Uh, Mark a pen. This uh, one? Paperclip? Uh, why? Why is it when I interact with the video, it drags? I like, bet I can make you say bread. That was the meaning, yeah. So, um, yes. What am I? What? The captions on screen. Uh, that was an example of it. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting distracted now, I think. Um, the, the point we were trying I bet to I make. I can make you say bread. The point we were trying to make is that with YouTube shorts, it is imperative that you get people's attention. And it's very easy to watch some of those because they just do that so well right at the beginning. But yeah. with Minecraft, with gaming especially, like those are going to pop up randomly for people. And it needs to be so clear what I'm about to watch. I might recognize it's Minecraft, but if I wasn't inside your head, I don't know what's going on. Like that's I, that's like I would say the number one problem with gaming shorts is that i feel like i had to be there i feel like i had to be in your head to see why the thing you're showing me was so impressive so just keep in mind that that really wide audience that your shorts are going to be pushed to and uh you know keep keep working at it all right, all right. we're gonna roll the well no we're gonna do a couple questions and then we'll roll the tool again yeah let's do some so <laughs> if you've said review it only works the one time so please if you're new to chat feel free to say it once and once only but now you're in we have 490 entries uh, so there's less than that many people here. So, or there's more than that many people here. So keep that in mind. The first question I grabbed was, can there be too much B-roll pattern interrupts, et cetera, on a language learning channel? It's kind of interesting. A language learning channel with too much B-roll. Mm, uh, good question. I, I don't think it really has to be confined to a language learning channel. It's, I think the B-roll should match the target audience. I do appreciate that if you're doing too many pattern interrupts, B-roll and whatever, in an educational learning environment, that could become very frustrating, forcing somebody to rewind and rewatch a video. That could be intentional. You might be trying getting people to try and do that. So there is that thought. I would still suggest, though, that in the first 15 seconds, you can turn the volume up to 11 almost in terms of the pattern interrupts just to get people invested 
and then slow it down when the actual value of the education comes on comes comes up earlier on or the very first thing that you teach is something that's uber simple you know the simplest thing that you can teach but you can do it in a very fast paced fashion to allow you to have that ex excitement of engagement to begin with mm. yes uh We'll go to the next one here. I stopped asking for subs and I got a big uptick in views and subs, but now I'm dropping off. Should I add the call to action back or just be patient? I, I think I'll tackle this one first this time and say that I don't think the whether or not you ask for subs and views is the reason things are dropping off. It could be yep. seasonality. It could be the topics you're doing. It could be a lot of things. Uh, the, the advice of not overwhelming people with calls to action is personally something I believe in. I've seen that work really well, I think, because when you don't do that, like we were talking about earlier, you have more room in your video to try to get people to watch another video. And after you've watched enough videos, you naturally decide, like, I think I'll subscribe to this person because I don't, I really don't want to miss their uploads. Like I'm out of time now on YouTube. So I might want to like find this channel again, subscribe. So it, let, let them kind of decide to do that. And yeah, I don't think that has anything to do with it, but that's just my take. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I think it's something to do with the content that you're publishing now isn't resonating as well with your audience as it was previously. And so that's why you're getting less views and subscribers as opposed to the call to action. As far as I'm aware, there's still no hard evidence to suggest that asking somebody to subscribe has a huge impact on whether they actually do or not. Um, it'd be really amazing if YouTube did maybe bring out some analytics to show, you know, when a viewer subscribed in you know, like, let's say they subscribed two minutes into the video. Did they do that? Because you told them to subscribe or there was a, a, a lower third that appeared on screen. Definitely continue to focus on the, the satisfaction that you're bringing to the viewer. Uh, and as Dan said, naturally a viewer will tend to subscribe to a channel when they've had that aha moment in a certain video or the collection of videos that they've watched has convinced them that they want to see more from this creator in the future. And then they'll press the red button from that point. Mm -hmm. uh, I got one more here before we go back to looking at some videos. So would you rather have a cliffhanger ending than a wind down ending? So we were talking about endings. I grabbed this while we were talking about the endings of a video, the call to action, like the, the overwhelming calls to action, the screen coming up too soon. Little gnat in here, go away. Hmm. Uh, I think ideally you would want like a cliffhanger that encourages people to watch the next video or the end abruptly type of content. But that can, that can be tricky to do. Like if you, when you're making the video and you don't know where you're sending them next, because that's a challenge I've had. And people have asked us about that. Like, well, Let's, how do you know which video you're sending them to? If you're making a video, if you're making a part two or a part three, which is a, a good question. Um, yeah. I would always try to avoid the wind down. You know, as mm -hmm. soon as you say, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Overall, finally, that those are trigger words and viewers are not stupid. They've been using YouTube now for 15 years. They know generally when a, when a creator is starting to end their video. And as soon as the viewer goes, I can smell the videos ending. They'll just click and click off. I don't know if you literally do that. I do. I do. Whenever I'm watching smell. the video, I start to smell. I literally start to smell the screen to see if it's happening. I don't know if you do the same thing. Uh, yeah. Sometimes my phone starts to smoke a little bit. It's overheating <laughs> watching the video too long. Uh, the, the question, a cliffhanger better than wind down. I would say that a cliffhanger isn't great either, but it depends on what you mean by cliffhanger. Like when we do a cliffhanger, I, I think it's okay because we would be saying like this, what I just told you is great and all, but you should watch this video next because it really supports what I just said. You know, that would be, I guess you could technically call that a cliffhanger because I'm saying there's more information in this other video. But if you're saying, Hey, new viewer, to see the result of this thing, come back tomorrow. That's not great because you you gotta you gotta have a lot of videos that have earned these people's trust. You know, you got you're kind of catering to your returning viewers when you do that. What, what if a new person watches and they're like, "Well, I don't know who you are. Why would I come back tomorrow? Why didn't you just show me in the video the end result of the thing?" Right. So 
I'd be careful with cliffhangers on YouTube. I think you're you're not you're not Better Call Saul, right? You're not a big hit TV show. Like the the mid season finale, Better Call Saul just happened. Not spoiling it, but it's a huge huge cliffhanger at the end. It was a good one, wasn't it? It was. It was. And I'm going to tune in, but it's like that's TV. That's like a different experience. Like that's a whole different world. And on YouTube, you may only ever meet somebody, a viewer, once ever. They may only ever see you once ever. So for the best chance for them to see you again, I would make sure your videos pay off. So just be careful with cliffhangers. Yeah. If you've sufficiently delivered on what was promised in the title and the thumbnail, then by all means, you can have a cliffhanger to the next story. Yes. I uh, like, you know, Mr. Beast is a classic example of in, in, introducing secondary stories in his content. And if one of those secondary stories is a cliffhanger to the next video, then by all means. But if you tell somebody in the video that they're going to learn how to draw this, build that, or I, I, a challenge video, they want to know what happens in, they want to know if that, they want to be, they want that story to be concluded in that video. But if it sets up something else, once a viewer is engaged in the content, you're more than welcome to do that. That's probably a brilliant way to do it, but I, it would require a lot of forethought and planning. I always appreciate comments like this. Thanks for the cliffhanger slash wind down ending info. I did. I do notice I've been winding down at the end of my videos. We haven't seen any videos from this creator today. It's going to be hard to get to all of you. Obviously, there's over 500 people who have entered the drawing, and then we have a few more vidIQ Max people to get to as well. Uh, so I do appreciate that people are looking at the advice we're giving, looking at the videos we're pulling up, and applying it to their own channels. Uh, the next one we're looking at is somebody from vidIQ Max. Uh, as we said earlier, VetIQ Max is our new group coaching program, and we gave them an early opportunity to get in today and have a guaranteed look, a guaranteed video review from us. So this is somebody who actually has joined the VetIQ Max program, and we're going to take a look at their uh, latest non-short uh, right now and mm -hmm. hope it plays. Our epic road trip up and down California Highway 1 is now behind us. It I've, I've got it lined up on mine. Uh, thanks. I, I guess this is just a thing now. <laughs> Except for the adverts, of course. <laughs> that's yeah. That's like the opposite um, problem. It's weird because I'm on the same. I'm on the vidIQ account. I'm not getting ads. Yeah, it's because I'm on my account, which is attached to my personal account, which is attached to vidIQ. Our epic road trip up and down California. Now, I guess what I will say is. All right, clear. Mm -hmm. That's a nice uh, intro shot. That's something quite epic, a drone shot to kick us off. And then after four seconds... Our epic road trip up and down California Highway 1 is now... There's an introduction. Us. It's one of the greatest. Of course, I'm still here on Route 1 because I want to tell you all about the highlights, the photo highlights of everywhere we went from Pismo Beach to Carmel by the Sea. So let me fill you in. Pismo Beach. Not bad, yeah. I, I felt as if um, they did a bit more B-roll when he was talking. Um, what I liked was I loved... Come on, this graphic, but I feel yeah. as if that graphic should have been brought in earlier and then had some more B-roll highlights uh, just to finish off a this, nice intro. This puts it into context, like how much you really drove and seeing mm. that sooner would have been like... Because I don't, I don't know anything about Highway 1 and that's that's why like seeing the the distance along the coast there is like really impactful here's some really interesting shots you got really nice yeah, nice, nice lots of nice b-roll here i if i can if i can give a little bit of a personal preference here and this is just me being kind of a diva i guess the transitions are kind of silly like oh uh, um yeah you're meaning the flip that's yeah. straight out of the box of windows movie maker six from 10 yep. years ago isn't it yeah yeah i would i would just be a little more i would either not use transitions or just be a little more elegant with these uh because these days transitions are either way over the top animated really professionally or they're just literally no transitions at all it's just shot to shot yeah um kind of like that's that another, that's a great shot i love that yeah Making good use of your equipment, your drone, the, the gimbals. That scene changes every three or four seconds. I think this kind of, I know this, that that was one of those transitions, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah. 
Uh, and this kind of like introduced a, like a tiny secondary story, I think, here. See, I could go like this. Oh, you're yelling at me. You're yelling at me. Hey. Dan Lewis. The that was like a nice little interlude, cute, um, fun little bit. Yeah. I, I do like that. That was very endearing. Mm. Overall, I like I like this video. And that wild and yeah, it's very very sharp. Lots of lots of scene changes. Now it's slowed down a bit. Yeah. But it's dynamic. Like now they're doing a, like they're gonna check out the food at this cafe, which and I love the setup. I'm I'm actually more invested in the cafe seeing some of the food they serve. Mm -hmm. but we're already gone, we're already somewhere else, which is fine. This is a travel experience. Can't miss them. Yeah, it's it's very fast, isn't it? I, I, like, I'm wondering, could this video be longer? Could you spend a bit more time with the otters or that yeah. duck that was um that was chirping or that I, person you were talking to in a cafe? I would have loved to see you talk to them a little bit more, take a bite of the cake. Um, like now that I noticed the length of this video, hmm. it feels like it's like a 20 minute video with all the content that's in it, but really it's a four minute video. And I feel like you could have maybe saved some of those shots and made a few videos out of all that and told different stories along the way. So this is actually like a, an, a, the opposite of the advice we would normally give where it's like, you know, take what you have and shorten it, whatever. Like, I think what you have is way more than what you're using. And you could probably may, have made three videos out of that one. Uh, maybe you still will. Maybe that's a good compilation and you'll expand on each of those things. You could still do that. But that's that's a really, that was cool. I really like that. I'm just curious, uh, the view count. Sorry, I'm getting a bit channel auditor here, but they've got 7,000 subscribers and then... But nine, 10 years ago, they were... Yeah, this old, all the stuff that looks very professionally shot. Um, I'm wondering if that perhaps is influencing the, the current audience. That's the thing. Like this looks like it was your portfolio channel. Like maybe this yeah. is stuff you worked on, and then you you've started putting yourself in the channel. But it, are you the? What I would do: look at your data. Are you still getting a lot of new people from those? Because if so, it's going to influence the views on your current videos. Oh, these adverts. Oh, that was an advert. Yeah, that was an advert. Yeah. That was very bold. Highway One Central Coast Tour brings us to Monterey, home to three main attractions. The Monterey Bay Aquarium is widely recognized as one of the best in the world. Cannery Row was once home to sardine canning factories and remains today as a major shopping area enshrined to author John Steinbeck. And then there's Fisherman's Wharf. More on that in a minute. Some of the areas we talked about in previous episodes, like the 17 mile. Yeah, again, not, not, not a bad introduction. Pretty good. Yeah. These are really cool. I, I really I like the adventures you're going on. I, I think that's awesome. Uh, corny transitions, but it's personal preference. And uh, yeah, I think the the thing like we would normally tell you is to look at your titles, um, look at your thumbnails, try and think of pitches for these videos that might appeal to yeah. a wider audience. I think you're right there, Dan. That the the video content is already good. Perhaps the thumbnails and the titles need a little bit of work. How can you make the California Highway One road trip more exciting and more clickable. Because mm -hmm. you do say that it's uh, like the best photo spots, but it looks to me like that's a drone shot. Uh, is that an accessible picture for most people to take, or is it the top of a mountain? I could be wrong here. It might not be a drone shot. Yeah, but it's it's cool either way. I, I'm so. What's cool about PhotoWalks TV is they are in vidIQ Max, which means you have access to our Discord server full of people uh, just like you who are YouTube creators. Be sure to lean on them as well. If you do start playing with your thumbnails and your titles and stuff, go into that Discord group. And you can also ping our coaches as well in there, Alexi, Jeff, or Travis. Uh, they're in there all the time. They can maybe give you some advice as well. Uh, that is that is the benefit of having some uh, YouTube membership, uh, me mentorship, excuse me. Uh, so the link is down below if you want to become a VidIQ Max member. We picked a few of them today for these, but we're going to go back to drawing people who have said review uh, here in chat. Mm, nicely timed. Melanie Anderson Equestrian. Uh, where's my cursor? It's confetti. It's too much. All right. 
Oh, I did it again. It's supposed to be on. I keep forgetting I don't have the links. I'm supposed to be on the search bar. Sorry. And close the tab there. All right. Equestrian life. Let's take a look at the uh, latest video. Looks about four minutes. Making of Horse Treats 2. Can you try? Can you try? Oh, Rob, what do I do? Okay, this did not happen last week. Second, you'll get in a second. Hey, everybody, welcome to this week's video. Uh, I'm, I've got it again. Uh, I'm so to, sorry. To mine. I'm, I'm going to use a different browser next time we do this. I think that might be the problem. All right, which um, video were we looking at there? Making of Horse Streets 2 is the latest one. Uh, okay. Okay, in a second, you'll get in a second. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. This week's video will be another making of horse treats. And the script description down below will be the different ingredients <laughs> that we use to make it, along with the temperature that we use in the oven and how long you do it for. Okay. So they're just a nice little Treat balls are very similar to molasses balls, just not quite as sweet. Feed the horse. She did a very good. It so bad today. And that's so I do hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, so I think audio is a bit of an issue. Yeah. Recording outside, I heard uh, I heard the wind as much as I heard the uh, the creator talking to the camera. So that might be something to fix. Or it could have been the horse, like breathing on the microphone yeah. too. The, the now, the horse and the, the relationship with the creator—that's all very well and good. But it's taken a long time to get into the uh, the, the meat of a video. Mm -hmm. um, that? That? It feels as if that could have been put somewhere in the video, but not in the first five seconds. Because now I'm left wondering what's going to happen. You know, are you going to be making any horse treats? And yeah, as I suspected. Whoa! That's a loud <laughs> B-roll. Uh, That's very loud. Um, we probably want to see this screenshot of the like in the first fifteen seconds, like because yeah. this is the final product. This is what I'm making. Uh, yeah. You'll be able to make it this at the end. That's a long rollout as well with just some music. How long did that last? Uh, it seemed like a really long time. We were just on that tray. All right. How? Hmm. I know we're going right into the middle of the video here, but we've lost narration. Yeah. It's all music. There's no instructions. Yeah. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me why you're doing it. Because it looks like you want me to follow along, but... I need to hear things like I need to I need some audio prompts because what if I'm what if I'm not able to watch the video I'm trying to literally pause it and make my own alongside yeah. you like hearing you say what you're doing will help me memorize like oh, okay cool I got to use a cup of this I you know I got to mix it this long so I think we have an introduction from mm -hmm. her and the horse in the first minute and then the next three minutes is music with in, with visual illustrations but not that much instruction yeah i like that you went out of your way to shoot it. it the sideways thing i would fix that while you're editing like make sure that everything's right side up um but i yeah i appreciate the amount of b-roll you you did put in the video but yeah narrating over it even if it's in post you can go into your video editing software after you've laid everything out and literally like hit record and talk over it you know so so you can kind of instead of music you could have been like in there just telling us what's going on um and then, yeah, I I think although I really love the intro with with the horse and you, it it's a lot of words. You were you were kind of like it, it kind of meandered when it should have started. Hey, today we're gonna be making horse treats, and like you can hold it up to the camera, and you still got the horse sitting there. Like, can I have the treat now? Can I have the treat now? Which was like yeah, really zoom zoom in with a yeah. freeze frame of a horse like looking a little irritated. Like, with a lot of pet channels. That. With dogs and stuff, they'll they'll give the dogs a, a voice basically by using text over the dog's face as, as if to say like, "Okay, can I have that?" Like, it, you could you could 
really like play with these intros a lot, I think. And then, yeah, you should be, you should remain in the video in terms of your narration. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. New and returning uh, viewers. And this week's video, it will be starting with the minis and solo meeting each other for the third time, followed by them being introduced into the paddock. And just so you guys know, they're all safe, all good after a little bit of just chasing each other around. But I do hope you guys enjoy. I didn't, I, I don't feel as if I was told very much in 30 seconds worth of an intro there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been really, really tight on the editing here and like trying to find a, a more efficient way to deliver the intro, generally speaking. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey guys, welcome to today's video, new and returning viewers in today's video. So you say today's video twice when, so that whole first part can get lopped off and you could say today, we're going to be taking a look at this and this, and this happens. And by the way, no horses were harmed in the making of this YouTube video. Enjoy. And yeah, I would just tighten these up quite a bit. Um, also, I don't know, this might be again, a personal preference. Do you feel it's a bit weird um, the angle of the camera. Like, why are we always sitting on the ground or laying in the grass? Uh, let's see if we can find another example then. Uh, let's try this as an intro. I, I, I'm going to talk. My angle's like shooting weird too. It's something I'm also working on. But, oh, my, my assumption is they don't have a tripod. So they're just putting it like on a small stool and having it point upwards. Perhaps, you know, maybe a tripod is a little too dangerous or awkward to have in, in such a space. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot of bottom up angles uh, in in the in the footage because uh, I'm presuming they don't have a second person to help them hold hold the camera. Yeah, it, it might be a personal preference. It's just weird. It's like a weird feeling. Like I think if we were talking to one of our production colleagues, you know, like Ben Johnson or somebody like that, they they might have something to say about the angle. A, he a head's a head's a horse's head is tends to be pointing downwards uh, yeah maybe that's like I'm intentional not, for that reason. reason yeah yeah so it is don't don't worry too much about that it's just a thing i noticed um i i think it's really like the dedication here and uh the different ideas you have for this content all awesome uh i i think they just could use a little bit of polish and then the titles as well um it, we just don't get a lot of context as for why we should click you know uh other than the fact that like you have horses but like what what are they doing today? Like riding lesson, for example, is just really vague minis and solos. Like I'm not a big horse person. So like, I don't exactly know what that means, but if that's, if that's like niche specific, that's fine. First day together. But what happened in the first day together? Like, did they, did they hit it off? Did they like each other? Was there a problem? Like you could have been a little more specific to, to kind of add something to that title to make it even more like, Oh, ooh, I want to see that. I want to see what goes down. Yep. And I know we're not doing audits, but red text or blue text on a red background i don't i can't think of a worse uh combination of colors to make text impossible to read yeah it's it's really the bubbles are so they, they have this weird gradient on them yeah it's really hard to read all that text any that, of it that one's a little better i think you're going in the right direction there yes all right. Do you want to draw another one, Dan? And maybe just I'll, if you, <laughs> yeah, in the background, I'll find the channel uh, once you draw it. I'm sorry to have done that to you. Every time we try this together, I I make I make it so you have to still share your screen. <laughs> I apologize. Maple Hill Homestead. Can you um put? I can't I can't see the um channel name. Oh, sorry. Here we go. There you go. Right. So just leave it on that while I find them in the background. Yeah, I, that was the most exciting part, and I hid it from you all. I'm sorry. <laughs> and just so for everyone who's new to the uh, stream today, if you if this is like the first time saying review, you only need to say it once. If you're seeing people say it and you're worried it's not getting through, it is. Uh, we have 606 entries, and there's 453 people here, which is awesome. So uh, you only need to say it the one time, and then you're good for the rest of the stream. You can chill out. Uh, so it looks like we got their channel up here. I got it. Yeah. Summer blackouts. Major energy regulator warns of summer blackout. Okay. How Should to cook channel? beans in an instant pot. If this is a channel audit, I would be talking about the topic jumping, but let's look at their latest video. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Let's do it. 
According to a chilling report by the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, or NERC, more than half the country could be faced with blackouts this summer. Today, we're going to talk about which areas of the country could be most impacted and how you can prepare your home or homestead in the event that this comes true. Not bad. I think the mm -hmm. one thing I would change is when you're saying how you could prepare, some B-roll of preparations in place might help there. Um, but generally not a bad intro, I would say. Yeah, that was that was really, really tight. I like that. I like that you've broken out into chapters. Event that this uh, comes true. Now let's get this out of the way right now. I am not here to instill fear. Rather, I'm here to bring calm. And the best way to remain calm is awareness and preparedness. Now, according to NERC, the areas of the country most susceptible to these rolling blackouts are going to be the West Coast and the Midwest, with the Midwest being the most susceptible. We've heard in the media for years about how... Okay. Mm -hmm. We're getting to the information. Yeah. What's, uh, what's their outro like? Uh, let's start here. Good. And not based out of fear. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to our channel. My wife and I produce all sorts of valuable content that is targeted towards homesteading and rural families. So I wouldn't include that bit. I, at that point, I will be telling them what video to watch next rather than the call to action to subscribe. Yeah. Let them make that decision themselves. Don't waste that time uh, that you had you there. Any value out of today's video? Please click the like. Yeah, don't, don't. Don't bother with any of that so stuff. This positive message can spread to more people. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. That was a classic case of a missed opportunity. Yeah. Tell them why specifically they should have watched this video. If it, it's if it was connected in any way, shape, or form. It's a tough sell. Like I can't get over the topic jumping, even though we're not necessarily yeah. auditing the channel. True. Like what? Why beans? And I get that they're a homestead, so this stuff is all relevant to them. But when you think about like a YouTube audience, like if that was the video you wanted to push me to next and you just told me about blackouts, I'm coming from a way different place, right? Like I came here looking for information on this on this summer blackout problem and you're telling me to go watch a video about beans and it's it's very like that's a huge disconnect. Like this is like the classic like you really need to like know your audience, right? So what am I saying? Like am I saying you should only be a channel about blackouts not necessarily but emergency preparedness perhaps i think so, you could have looked into that video like, you could have you know, that's one of so you know these part these blackouts are one of the things that uh, uh, really concern us about um building a homestead mm -hmm. here are some other truths about building a homestead if you really want to if you're really serious about this that, that's okay. where the link could have come through that could have worked or, or the bean video you could say this is all about being prepared for an emergency just like this that, video here where we prepare a lot of food for an emergency yeah. situation so maybe instead of like this homestead channel that's kind of that's something that's your superpower like you're really good at helping people prepare for crises so I would just be really thinking about the chaining the chaining of your videos together. Like, why should someone who watches this informative video about summer blackouts watch a video about cooking beans in an instant pot? This video has performed well, seventy five thousand views uh, in the last month. Is that the the standout video on the channel? Uh, oh, restoring except one, deck. except for one of her. And that's an interesting one. I wonder how much that is influencing the rest of the channel, given that it's still getting forty views per hour. Yeah. And it's a big outlier. I'm wondering if you can capitalize on that a little bit, if it's still relevant to the content that you make today, whether it be an update video, something to think about there. Yeah, there's there's a lot here. I mean, I think I think they have a really cool property and they can do a lot content wise. Uh, it's just the pitch to that audience. audience. Like something has been missing, and with Mother's Day around the corner, I knew it was time to think of something to get out. I'm like, I'm seeing a thumbnail. I'm thinking, how long is it before I see one of these chicks? I tried to resist. I even put a poll out to you. I should have seen one by now. I didn't want to see the poll. I wanted to see one of these cute chicks. All right, so what? It is 22 seconds. Not bad, but I think it could have been quicker. Yeah. Or, you know, like you you tease, they're in the crate or whatever, and you tease it like you can, you can hear, hear them. them. Like, you, like, you, you open it and then it goes blank or black and then you start the story properly. Or, or yeah, like 
yeah just just really like play that up it, it kind of feels like a, a vlog channel in some ways mm, and they're making yeah. like a lot of search driven content um but yeah i think i think you should find a way to tie your videos together and that will be that exercise will help you kind of identify well who are my videos for who like why would someone watch this video and then the next one i want them to watch yeah but I, I think it's pretty strong. I think the intros are, are pretty strong. The outros definitely need some work. Um, but they get to the point, I would say, relatively quick. Yeah, I think overall, generally good um, production values in terms of thumbnails, in terms of like, the creators on, on screen presence, and the editing look fairly solid, solid as well. So no major concerns around that area uh, other than as you said dan some of the connective tissue of the videos seems a little loose and 100 percent zelda is 100 percent right this is a fairly new bit of advice we've been giving a lot of creators True. directing yeah. you from one video to another so yes not to not to be too hard on anybody who we give that advice to today but when we see the opportunity we want to let you know hey there's this cool thing you can do and we've seen it work really really well so thank you for 100 zilla for pointing that out and uh thanks for being here you're awesome uh, a couple uh, of things i'm trying to establish when i'm planning my video is what is the, what's going to be the first 15 seconds of a video to tr really nail down that title and thumbnail and deliver on it and then where am i sending them next before I even plan out like the, the central core of the video, it's like, how does the video start? And then where am I sending them next? Not necessarily how this video is going to end. I'm going to figure that out as I'm, as I'm planning that stage, but I kind of want to have an idea if there's somewhere I can send them next. Yeah. Cause I remember Dan, I've been saying to it, you, uh, when this video ends, send them to this monetization video because yeah. links or, or whatever. We'll, we'll literally talk as, as I'm writing a script, uh, I'll ask Rob like, Hey, I'm writing a script about this video. Where do you think would be a good place to send people? Cause he like, he knows really well the videos he made. I know really well the videos I made. If I want to push people to a Rob video, it's, I ask him like, which one do you think is best that fits with this topic? We plan it out. And we will even talk about like the pitch in, in how we're going to throw to that next video. Let's see if we can prove this right now, actually, Dan, because the video you made um, on Monday got a one of 10. Yay. Yes. Uh, and you can see it's performing well above average. Look can at you that. remember where you sent people? Um, it's in the description. If you go to uh, details. Okay. So you sent people to get monetized faster, right? So it was a monetization to monetization push. I wanted people to yeah. go down our monetization rabbit hole. So we said, ah, so we sent them to answering questions about monetization. Cool. So what I should be able to do now, fingers crossed, is say, ah, there you go. And there it is. That's, that's the end screens. We're getting quite a bit of traffic from end screens. And to just prove that probably, hopefully a little bit more accurately, I think this is going to work. Uh, let's do this for the last seven days. So there, can you see that bump? You know, we, it, <laughs> we were getting zero views from end screens from other videos. And then we got 800 views because on that one day, because Dan was sending people to, to the content, yeah. um, which is brilliant. You know, let, let's have, eight, let, I mean, they are free views, essentially. If you send somebody, a viewer to another one of your videos and you do it effectively, that's an extra view for your channel. And he didn't, it didn't cost you a penny. It just required a bit of foresight into how you're going to tell somebody to go and watch a further piece of content. Absolutely. We have our next channel here from the VidIQ Max group. The folks who are in our group coaching program, VidIQ Max, which is linked down below. It is Brune. They are 20,000 subscribers deep on their gaming channel, which is about Roblox. Um, I have a feeling that the videos won't play because I've had terrible luck today with that. But just real quick, looking at the titles and thumbnails, you can see why they're doing so well. They're adding stakes to all of their videos. Like the, the latest one here that's not a short, 10 players versus Jammer Chase. Mm-hmm. But today, I turn into Jamar Chase in Football Fusion. If my team can't score 100 points, then I have to get... Ah, oh, they're setting up such a cool way. All right, you, do you want to try? I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, yeah. But today, I turn into Jamar Chase in Football Fusion. If my team can't score 100 points, then I have to give away $5 worth of Robux. Make sure to... So, in the first, what, eight seconds, yep. they've told us the premise... And they've given us the stakes and they've made that very clear through captions. Now, this is more of a 
gaming style approach, Mr. B mm -hmm. style approach, Gen Z mm -hmm. um, content consumption, but it was very effective. Now they have done this. Make sure to like. I'm curious how long this lasts. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment below this video. We are so close to 20,000, and you can become an OG by hitting the subscribe button. Right, okay, so they're trying to create a bit of a tribe and a culture there. Yeah. I'm a little meh about that. You know, kind of maybe I'll give him a pass because the intro was so effective that they were able to do it very quickly. I mean, if you think about that creator who was talking about the making treats for horses, 14 seconds in, they barely even started explaining what they were going to do. So this creator yeah. was able to do it much faster. But You've seen Mr. Beast videos when he asks you to like and subscribe. It's either in the middle of the video in a very quick one second call out or at the end of the video. He'll like the person who won the money will be crying and they're just going nuts. And he's like, like and subscribe. And and that's it. Right. Like putting that in the front of your video, I think, kind of turns people off. Dude, that was a gutsy call. Die. Come on, guts. Let's go. <laughs> so the, the video is moving at a, a fair pace here. I'm not seeing much uh, editing techniques right now, you know, like zoom ins, emphasizing on the jokes that they did. Like, I did notice that there was um, this moment where I think one of the characters did a dance when I got into the end zone. I felt like there was an opportunity to do something there. I don't know yeah. what. Like maybe add um, some touchdown music, a, a Beyonce song to it. I was thinking that like for like two seconds or something, or touchdown music, uh, a bit more excitement may have been uh, an opportunity there. Crowd cheering, yeah. Like I, I think your videos would really benefit from that extra bit of sauce, like going in and just having a lot of storytelling, like in in different, in using different sound effects, different, like really capturing and highlighting different moments. Making these like scores a lot more memorable along yeah. the way, you know. I think it would be fascinating. Uh, let's just assume that Brune edits their own videos. I think it would be fascinating if they handed a, one of these off to a seasoned gaming editor mm -hmm. who is understands some of the um, concepts we're talking about and see what they did to this video. Yeah, because it looks like you put you front loaded all of your e editing at the you know. For the intro, and we didn't yeah. get a lot of it in this. I mean, well, that was a punch in, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh my god! I'm gonna jump this. What the? What a time! Go back this way. Go back. Yeah, like there was something that could have been done there, couldn't there? There could have been a joke added, a punch in, slow motion, like or like a klutz moment, you know, a, a potential meme being added. Just a, in a womp womp, you know? Yeah. Like just a really quick, like. Oh, sorry, that wasn't it. <laughs> yeah, like just a just something. I don't have a really good sound effect loaded up. Yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I think what we'll, what we can say is that the creators got this spot on in terms of the most important things were done right. The thumbnail, the title, the intro, all expertly done. Now, how can you uh, make the meat of a content? more satisfying for the viewer i will assume that your audience retention in the first 30 seconds is probably quite high mm -hmm. so it's maybe 75 percent, 70 percent. but then maybe you're losing let's say still too many people during the the main section yeah um, so something maybe to to, to capitalize it on there you know, editing can do a lot in terms of keeping people engaged and entertained, right? Sound effects, yeah. music, really amping up the scores. But another thing that that really is important is when you're playing, when you're actually recording, record for your edit. Play up situations that happen while you're recording. So if somebody misses a shot, make a big deal out of that. Like, oh my gosh, did you see that? And And turning your personality up like that is a really good way to help you in editing. Because now you know, like, oh, this moment where I'm freaking out, this is a great moment to really put some sound effects to really, like, get in there with some visual effects. So there is, like, an element of this that, like, it really helps if while you're recording, you are aware that for every second of video with your face on it that you're going to put out there, like, you need to be, like, 10 out of 10 you. You know, I'm not telling you to be fake. I'm just saying take you, crank you up a little bit and try to do that throughout the whole video. It's 13 minutes. And as soon as the intro was over, I felt like we went from from here to here. Like, I just feel like mm -hmm. the excitement dropped down and it stayed there. It stayed very like base level excitement the whole time. So 
There were moments, there were things that happened. I want to see the camera zoom in on those things. I want some sound effects for impact. What we're suggesting is a lot of editing, a big change. Ease into this. Like, take it slow. Don't try and do this all at once. But see what your comfort level is. See what you can kind of slowly kind of add on. And uh, one thing that helped me, and I, I don't want to insult anybody here by saying this, but if, you, if you're hearing me say that and you're thinking, that's a lot of work, Dan, go and watch whatever Premiere or After Effects or whatever, whatever software you use to edit. Go and watch a beginner level tutorial. And the reason I say that is because the people who teach at the, those levels show you things that you might have missed. Like I learned so much watching things I thought I already knew. People showing me keyboard shortcuts I never thought to use. People showing me tools in the program in, in Adobe Premiere that I never thought to use. And that sped up my editing so much. Just, just knowing I can use my arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys to jump to different clips something I just wasn't ever doing. I was scrubbing manually for the longest time. And then I watched a beginner level tutorial because the thumbnail caught my interest. And I learned this new trick that that I would say helped me edit 20% faster. So just a whole bunch of advice at you all at once. <laughs> Let's watch the uh, final 20 seconds. Then. Please. I see you. He can't catch that. I dimed you. Let's Easy. go. Let's go. go. I'm not giving my money, huh? Anyone Dial that up to 11. Make that celebration more fantastic. Yeah. Want to sub for the money? Uh uh. No money. Ha ha. No Robux. You saved five bucks. That just is 800 <laughs> yards. Let's go. All right, guys. I got MVP wide receiver. Let's go. Uh, Make sure to like and subscribe. Oh, you see that video to the left? That's my other fusion video. Click on it right now or perish. So there was a call to action there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was done in just a comical way. Watch it mm -hmm. all perish. Um, So I'm fine with that. That's a good start. Uh, it feels as if the formula of these videos is quite similar, so maybe you don't need to do a big sell on it uh, unless there's something epic. Like maybe there was one epic moment you could have taken from that video uh, to 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 create the cliffhanger. You know, even though you're setting up a new story there, that might have been another way to do it. But generally speaking, I think the intros and the outros were of a a solid standard compared yeah. to what we've seen elsewhere. I knew the video was over way before you told me to watch that next video, but it was still solid. I, I would say that. I just, I think, uh, you know, there was, a, there was some celebration, a very, I would say a very contained celebration of you getting to save your money. And then after a little bit of that, it was like, by the way, go watch this next video. So people, when they realized that you won and you didn't have to spend your money might've left. Is This is a funny question. This because this is like a, a generational thing. So, mm. Uh, this comes from a film called Spinal Tap, whereby, um, I can't remember exact, the exact scene, but traditionally when you turn up the volume on something, the, the maximum was 10. But Spinal Tap were able to say, well, our concerts are better because we can dial it up to 11. We can go even louder. We can go even, even bigger. And so that's what we mean when we say dial it up to 11. Make the thing that happened spectacular, amazing add sound effects, graphics, make it louder, bigger, brighter. And it yeah. adds as like a, a climactic point. You, you're trying to set something up for a, for a, a final delivery. And if you dial it up to 11, the phrase that we're using, that's what we're, we're meaning. So if I was if I was to sit here and, and my biggest level of excitement during the stream was, okay, so it looks like we got another video here. Let's go ahead and click on this. And Rob were to watch it and give me some advice. He might say, Dan, can you take you up to 11? And what he's expecting me to do then is we have the next video right now. Okay, we got to check this thing. You know what I mean? Just louder, more excited to be here. I'm on YouTube. I get to do this for a job. This is awesome. You know, like that's what we want to see when we say like take it up to 11. We're like you, you are here playing games for people. Like people are watching you play video games. You're sitting in your room with air conditioning. Like you are excited to be alive right now. Like that's what, <laughs> that's what I mean when I say take it up to 11. Uh, and you know, this doesn't apply to all creators. Like if you would say to say the same thing to the photography channel earlier on, like dial it up to 11, it probably wouldn't suit the creator and their audience. Um, you know, their volume is maybe more still eight, a volume of eight, but the equalizer, you know, the base is, pitch perfect and the trebles are really set right and now i'm going into a metaphor that nobody's going to understand <laughs> whatsoever then we'll we'll just have to draw another name here from those of you who have used the hashtag review at least once All in the right. stream once and only once preferably 
and we have Crazy Casper 3312. I forgot to do the drum roll, so I, I did that sound effect. It works so. better. I like that. Crazy Casper, was it 3112? Was that? I, I didn't even go to the right place on the internet to type that in, so I don't yes. I don't even deserve to share my screen right now. Well, that trailer's pretty uh, happening. These are music videos, it looks like. Hmm. Interesting. I'll so, click on I'll click on one and see if it kills sure. my computer. So go ahead. I'm unstoppable. Do the impossible. I'm yep. irresponsible. Oh. I don't know how much of that we can play. Yeah, we might have to talk over it as we're watching it. Uh I think a lot of the advice that we've been giving to other creators is probably not going to apply so much to this one because it's not the standard intro or the standard outro. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see. Uh, all right. It. So here, here's the thing. A lot of action. A lot of like crazy stuff happening. Um. The okay. So my first YouTube videos when I was just a wee lad, I got <laughs> Halo, and I wanted to make videos with Halo because I watched Rooster Teeth and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. So this is I did this exact thing, but with Halo. So I would get a popular song and I would use the Halo items and characters to act out a music video. And that was right when YouTube started really like getting into copyright, like automated copyright stuff. And so as soon as that happened, as my videos were just starting to like get some views, the copyright system smacked them down. And so whenever I see somebody take like a popular song and there's no narration and it's just them doing stuff with the song in the background, I worry for them because maybe this video is not pulled from YouTube, but if you're, if you're hoping to take this to the next level one day to, to have YouTube be like a job for you or even just a side hustle, that music is going to keep that from happening is my fear. Mm -hmm. So that's my first like caution to you. Um, do you want to try and uh, share this? Yeah, I can do. Stuttering on me a lot. I can do. Uh, which one do you think we should? I did the latest one. You could pick a different one. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, we are going to talk over this a little bit. To try and avoid um, copyright issues. Uh, so the vibe I'm getting is that it is a montage collection of this creator's content mm -hmm. to some popular music. That's oh yeah, that's the other thing. It's a different creator, so it's like two ways to get copyright. Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I don't think the um, the editing is bad. No. Uh, it seems fairly sharp uh, and and whatnot. It's it's just really difficult because it's not their content, and so we we do worry about like where can you take a channel like this? Like, what's the farthest yeah. you could go with this? Let me just play the outro. Oh, no, no. I, I so it, yeah, I it's just too early there. It's just a sizzle reel, I guess, the whole time. Just like their favorite moments from videos. I don't think you can do that for an entire video. I think it feels like it gets quite samey quite quickly. Mm -hmm. That if it's just all random spectacular moments from a other creator's channel. And this is an example, I think, where it's, it's, it's dialed up to 11 constantly and so it loses its impact very quickly you know you have to have these different levels of pacing mm -hmm. um which can be you know in music can it can be a little bit more tricky to do that and then as you say dan i think it's we we have to come back to the thumbnails and the titles even though we this isn't a channel audit why is a viewer going to click on this on this content yeah, it that's there. You're using a lot of like popular content. I'm seeing Sonic, I'm seeing Marvel stuff, I'm, and I'm not getting an impression that you're actually putting yourself in these videos. I think it's literally like a channel full of remixes of things like you're that you were a fan of songs you like with creators you like with or movies you like. Um, and it's you've been at this for months too. That's yeah. the other thing. So you've been kind of taking the strategy and like putting this out there for a really long time. 
and you've been seeing i guess yeah so about a, a year ago there were some that kind of took off those are those like that different than what we've been looking at let's have a look seems identical to me i've seen i've already seen these clips of jumping in this um, ball pool yeah yeah mm. this is a this is a tough one this one because i, I kind of want to say you had viral moments all about a year ago mm -hmm. and that that trend has stopped now. Like, when was the last video that really popped for you? I feel like they've been really focused on that one creator for a yeah, lot of men, it. Like, men, well, it's it's because I think it's this unspeakable, unstoppable title yeah. has been successful in the past. But but, but it, now they're 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 less popular this year than they were last year, maybe. And or mm -hmm. the content is so similar. Yeah. To what it's been in the past the viewers have moved on mm -hmm. so i i think your your thumbnails are really nice i think the the titles are very basic which doesn't help because excuse me i think it would be better if it was like um you know top five moments from so and so there are these channels that do this type of thing successfully. Like mm -hmm. I've seen, um, I have seen some channels recently doing remakes of the Obi Wan Kenobi trailers, like getting all of the content they've been able to get from the trailers, putting it together into like a mega trailer, but it's still a trailer. Whereas these are transformed into music videos, and maybe there's just not the the consistent audience there to to watch these on a regular basis. Yeah, are there too many people doing the same exact thing? Like, just just taking, you know, a movie, a creator, and like just cramming clips together and hoping for results. You know, maybe someone is dominating that space and it's just hard to compete. Yeah, this this I think it's this person who takes existing trailers and turns them into their own. Right. I always have to block channels like this in my feed because they try and like make them look like so legit, you know, I, I'm like, I don't want to watch the real trailer. I don't want to watch this. This, yeah. this content never appealed to me, but I get it. But yeah, I, I think there's, you could keep messing with the strategy, but I still think even at the most successful, like if you were to get millions of views, I don't think you're monetizing this content and that might be okay. Maybe you just True. enjoy yeah. the art yeah. of doing this and that's totally fine. But if you were, if you're hoping somebody can look at your content and go, oh, all you need to do to make this monetizable is, I mean, it's change everything. It's it's like you need to be narrating, you need to be reacting, you need to not be using, you know, copyright copyright and music. So you know, or you need to be using music that's licensed rather. So yeah, that's advice from I think a bunch of different angles. Next one. Yep. Is it a random or a? We're going to check out Octorius, actually. We're going to look at one of Octorius' oh, recent okay. videos. Again, good IQ Max user and moderator extraordinaire. Thank you, Octorius. Uh, let's, uh, when you pull it up, let's check out the double PS5 FPS, the, the latest non short there. Okay. So this one that's two minutes 57. Uh, yep. This one, right? Okay. Variable refresh rates has finally been added to the PS5 consoles and will allow you to experience smoother gameplay with less input lag and for some games even play beyond the frame cap by an incredible amount. So I love the way that he just immediately that no introduction of who I am. Yeah. Why you should be watching why you should be watching this channel, like, subscribe, or whatever. It is basically the first words are variable refresh rates has finally been added to the PS5 consoles. So something has been added to a PS5 console. Like, Double, what, is, what does that mean for the layman? And you get into that next. Yeah, like uh, this one setting. And so he explained what this one setting was oh, yeah. as soon as I click on the video. And will allow you to experience smoother gameplay with less input lag. And for some games, even play beyond the frame cap by an incredible amount. Nice. 
good stuff, like getting me to follow my eyes around the screen, showing the important stuff. Like it's almost going a little too quickly in kind of a good way in that I can't, I, I, I didn't quite catch that, but you're on to the next thing on that. This thing's exciting as well. May add some replayability to the video. To enable this feature, go... And then to, so you've, you've told us the thing, why it's important, and now you're showing us how to set it up within 13 seconds. This is all like fantastic, quick, easy, you know, bang, 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 educational content. Yeah. Go to settings, then screen and video, then the video output tab, and put the 30 seconds. PRR option onto automatic. If you do not see the option there, then make sure your PS5 system software is fully up to date and ensure you are using a VRR capable monitor or TV. So, so I would say this is excellent stuff. The amount you've told us in 30 seconds is very good. This could have easily turned into like a six, seven minute video, I would assume. Uh, had you labored on these points. The pacing changed a little bit after the introduction. So I think that was good as well. What What about the ending? So like, I feel like they gave me so much, like Octorius, you gave me so much in the beginning. I'm worried, did people watch the middle of the video? Like you've told me how to turn this feature on and the benefits of it. Why mm. am I continuing to watch? Such as LG series of OLED screens. I'll have links to those in the description. I recommend you enable the option to apply VRR to unsupported games as well, as whilst not every game supports it natively yet, most games will still benefit with it turned on. All right, let's go into the middle now. Complete ray tracing. No other game on any console has come anywhere near close to this sort of thing. It's genuinely incredible. Insomniac themselves did state that with VRR on, the performance increase on average is about 50% on all modes, but from what I can tell, it's even higher. You can even. Yeah, this feels like there's a bit of padding here, doesn't they? Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, because um, the video is still relatively short. Mm -hmm. um, I think. They're trying to, Altorius is trying to get as much as they can out of changing one setting. You know, it's a bit like how to hide your subscribers on YouTube. You can yeah. tell somebody how to do that in 10 seconds, but how do you flesh it out a little bit? Mm -hmm. So I'd be, I'd be curious to know what the um, audience retention for this video is. My yeah. guess is it's like uh, 40 40 to 50 percent would be my guess for this one for, if it's above 50 percent they're probably doing quite well yeah for for a three minute video i'd want to see it higher so i am wondering if if there was some clean way in your style where you're very quick and this is only for your attention not good to to try and like tell people the reasons they should stick around you know like you just wait until you see all the th different improvements that turning this one setting yeah. on will make for your gameplay right like teasing it a little bit to say like this is better done i think i think this was a little tease wasn't it beyond the frame cap by an incredible amount so enables this yeah but but you're it's a three minute video and, and like 30 seconds in i have everything i need so it's like well what else if i turn this on you know are there any downsides to it things like that like if you imply anything any reason to watch the full three minutes that might help if the retention's bad it might not be uh, i know we, we shouldn't be doing like the the channel audit side of this, but maybe there could have been a a tweak to the thumbnail because he's saying double PS5 frames per second. Usually when you start to add a frames per cent frames per second increase number in the thumbnail, that can add more um clickable aspects to to it. Rather than I mean you could still have this change this option but maybe replace, I don't know. I, I'm I'm overthinking this a little bit, probably. It, well, I can see where you're coming from because it's kind of like putting a price tag like on a on a video where you review a product. Like the price tags are always like really effective. Uh, taking the frame rate and showing it transitioning from, you know, 50 frames to 150 frames like would, would impress people. Like I got, whoa, how do I get that, you know? Increase FPS, PS5, yeah. So that is exactly what I'm talking about. 30 frames to 90 frames. Yeah. Instant performance boost is kind of interesting. No frame rate numbers on that one. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you say so. <laughs> uh, right. Let's go back to the outro, shall we? See. See if uh, effectively send us on to the next video. To be able to use VRR, but don't have a display. That
fast, scenes render seamlessly, games just look crisper, and input lag is significantly reduced. If you do want to be able to use VR... So, I guess we kind of know that the video is ending at this point because of these very clear calls to action on the right-hand side. Yeah. Um, do you think we should... Otori should hold this back and just continue talking about the, the core of the content? I guess it depends on what he's going to say. Is he going to say, yeah. by the way, this video here will show you this, or is it just going to stay there without any reason to click on it? Let, let's watch the last 20 seconds. Thus, scenes render seamlessly, games just look crisper, and input lag is significantly reduced. If you do want to be able to use VRR but don't have a display that supports it, then check out a video on screen now to see the best displays for PS5, okay. as well yeah. as subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. If you want to know what playing PS5 games in a cinema is like, then watch a video on screen. It's so awesome. So, uh, was there two, was there two calls to action there? It's, I think it's both. I think the one yeah. video serves the two purposes, right? Which is yeah. fine. But what, what I guess what got me was that your end screens come up before you finish the sentence. And it's a mm -hmm. little thing, but it, it's, it's an invitation to leave when you haven't told me why to click the video yet. So, I, what I like to do is I like to tell people, you should watch this video next because, and as I say, because that's when the video pops up. And sometimes my end screens are so short. I only because you can only make them five seconds at minimum. So sometimes I don't have a choice. But if they're long enough, I can I can get in there by like not don't show it yet. Wait until I say the magic word, which is because in that case. Yeah, uh, a good video though. I think they've eked. Well, that's the thing. Have they eked out enough from what seems to be a relatively simple settings change? I sense that frames per second is a a big topic in gaming performance videos is 4,000 views for a 50,000 subscriber channel good and I feel as if there's potential for more the discord videos did really well yeah you can't really do that forever but it you know certain yeah, things are going to have a wider Discord's, appeal isn't it? yeah mm -hmm. they're still bringing in some a nice uh, views per hour as well if you weren't only PlayStation and you find that Xbox has Discord mm -hmm. in the future, yeah. like I, I would do it, even though it's it's not like PlayStation specific. I would kind of I'd be curious to see what would happen. But again, we're we're more just kind of wow, Discord, 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 Discord. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, maybe uh... he's doubled down too. <laughs> Is it, but are you right, Dan? Is it worth maybe exploring Discord on different gaming platforms? Or mobile. And or mobile. It's yeah. on mobile. It's it's not on Switch. It might I don't know if it'll ever come to Xbox. Uh, but yeah, they have released Discord on mobile. They make improvements to it. That would be a way different channel. Uh I'd hate I'd hate to see that like, you know. <laughs> I think I think your passion's PlayStation, so that would be. But I mean, we did notice every single popular video is like hook Discord up, yep. so it might be worth testing. If you're if you've been other platform curious, it might be worth testing it out. We need to get to the next channel though. Uh, Okie dokie. So that's going to be one of y'all. Seven hundred entries now. Thank you so much. The channel we're looking at next is. Mm, stupid Mick Player GM. I I'm already into this channel. Stupid. I like the avatar. I like the name. Stupid Mick Player. Oh, I'm gonna spell it wrong. That's not gonna help. Okay, I think I have it. Got it. Okay, so they're doing Shots Minecraft shorts. So earlier when we saw Minecraft short. We were missing a lot of context. We we if we were we're gonna pretend we just found this in the wild. We weren't really looking for a Minecraft short. We just were scrolling through shorts and this popped up. Let's do beating the end the dragon without a crafting table. Okay. Hmm. This is slow. So like we get it, you don't like crafting tables. But wait, you didn't beat the Ender Dragon. Yeah. 
and you had just, to tell us. I don't. I'm seeing this. Uh, I've seen this strategy a couple of times now, like where people are telling us when the video starts to watch until the end. Right. Really? Like it's like a problem for them, right? Like, yeah. uh, oh, people never watch my videos to the end, so I got to remind them to do that. It might that might work, but I think you're not building a lot of returning viewers because the payoff was was not what was promised in the title. Um. Yeah, also, that was. Also, huh. Um, yeah, I think I, I think this is their content because it's the same name, but there yeah. are ways to get your TikTok videos off of TikTok without the watermark. Yeah, don't put that watermark. I YouTube themselves have said in a call I've been in, the watermark will keep you uh, from from seeing success with shorts. So mm -hmm. I'm par I'm paraphrasing, but they heavily implied that watermarks from other platforms are not something they want to see in shorts. So be sure. I see that there are, it's in every video now that you've pointed it out. Be sure you do everything in your power to not have the TikTok watermark on your videos. So that's a very, very old Minecraft device, an old Minecraft trick, cobblestone yeah. generator. Um, and it says it in the in the text right like the text that pops up a lot of a lot of minecrafters would know how to do this maybe maybe this will appeal to new people i think it would need explaining to me though i need some as a direction. as a minecrafter i think you would get it like because yeah. the yeah the the concept is every time you break that cobblestone it regenerates and it's literally infinite that's that's what's happening. The lava and the water are meeting and creating a block that wasn't there before. Oh, so if you had a pickaxe, you would keep grabbing it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's you know, but it's one of the oldest tricks in the book. I think the tutorials you give should be a little more like, oh, I didn't know that. Another portal robot sounds really interesting. Watch till the end. It looks so cool. Okay. So you've you've asked me to watch to the end. No sound effects or music of any kind. This is a silent short. What what was the robot? Like what how how did you make that? Like you start building it and then snap, you're, it's done and you're like, "Wait, I thought you were going to show me to make a Nether Portal robot." I okay, I can see it now. It it took me a minute. I had to watch it again. So I saw the arms and the legs. Mhm. Mm um I would have liked to see the building of that more. 20 iron golems versus 4 wardens. Some epic music here would have been good. Yeah. They're brawling. The brawl's taking too long. Yeah. But okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> apparently, apparently that's what happened. So yeah, we're we're not so it's storytelling. That's really at the essence of what we're saying here. You're not using your shorts to tell like a solid story of a good beginning and middle and end. Oh. I can't I can't change the volume of this unfortunately. <laughs> oh, that's too annoying. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Storytelling. That's what they need. They they definitely need more storytelling. Um because watching the Iron Golems and the Wardens go at it was kind of like eh you know yeah. it it's we're i i think i think it's a matter of like storytelling and ideas too so they did some longer stuff earlier on but it's been exclusively short so i would say for the last month three mm -hmm. weeks it's a competitive space. It's tough. It's Minecraft shorts, especially. It's it's really, really tough to stand out. But the channels that do, if you notice, they're the ones that take it to the next level. They're bringing something to the table that you haven't seen before. They're showing you Minecraft in a new and interesting way. And you can do that if you're really in, an incredible builder. That can be enough. But then you also have to pair that with like good storytelling. But you're doing kind of tutorials, you're doing brawls with different mobs, you're you're trying a lot of different things here. Let's try this um video here. Just I know it's not a short, but it's still a relatively short video. Yeah. 
But see, the sound effects are... Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the cell, it's, it's much more visually clear what's happening here. And you can see a progression of what's happening. Yeah. Okay. So that's that portrayal of the two sides going at it was just easier to watch. It, the sound yeah. effects were nice. The video wasn't too long. And yeah, I like the shot they used made it look really intense because the golems just got overtaken by this purple like wave of monsters. So all of that stuff visually satisfying. There's a lot of elements there. It told a story. So it's just go and watch some of these videos and try and like learn from them. <laughs> I have no idea, Renegade Game and Art Channel. It's Minecraft. People do stuff in Minecraft. Yeah, I respect that not everyone plays Minecraft and they don't exactly know what the heck they're looking at. Um, all right, we have uh, one more VidIQ Max channel before we uh, right. you know, head out for the day. Uh, and that is going to be Fee 1316, I think, or Fi. I find that. Person. They are a crypto uh, channel exploring passive income, I believe, with cryptocurrency. Uh, so this is a vidIQ Max participant, somebody who is part of our coaching program. They are enjoying YouTube mentorship now from the folks here at vidIQ, and they got an early chance to submit their video today. So we're going to watch one of their, not watch the whole video, but watch a bit of one of the recent videos. Good thumbnails. I think yeah. I'm going to start with what is cryptocurrency? Where, where, why buy it? Where is it? Because good introductory, like that's yeah. This this might be a flagship piece of content for from search. May not perform well to begin with because that can happen with search based content. Uh, but let's see what we get in the first twenty seconds. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel or welcome back if you're not new here. Uh, we're going to do this series. I've been hoping to do this for a while now, and I'm going to title it "Intro to Crypto." So the I don't think we needed any of that. Uh, no. just, just, just start, just imagine I've come into the channel for the very first time. You don't need to welcome me here or welcome me back. Just get into it. Also, he's using a beacon microphone. I hope they had more success with it than I did. <laughs> the whole point of this series is to uh, get people familiar with crypto that this is their first time in this environment. And especially as we move on over to DeFi, I'm hoping to do a bunch of videos like that. So. I clicked on the video because you told me what cryptocurrency was going to be, but you've kind of just repeated that again. Hopefully you're going to find out this. Well, if you start telling me about it rather than telling me what I'm hopefully going to find out, then we can, then I can start to really engage with the content. So we're going to answer today. What is crypto? We're going to jump right in and skip the intro. <laughs> no, no, that is exactly the opposite of what you just did. <laughs> So sorry. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize for being brutal, but that's a, a viewer probably doesn't say this out loud, but subconsciously, that is just what's run through their head, and they may have not even got to this point in the video. All right, so let's let's just imagine you went into the YouTube editor mm -hmm. and you went cut, sli cut, slice, and remove this first portion. Let's see what comes next. So before we answer the question, what is <laughs> you? Oh! I don't want to know before you answer the question. You, you're giving me every reason not to continue watching. Oh my! I, I'm, I'm doing this a bit in jest, by the way, because you know uh, we all do these things in our own videos, yeah. and when we watch them back, we don't notice this. Right. So let's uh, look at a scenario that I've been through. Maybe you've been through it too. But well, I don't know because I've not. I've, I haven't invested in crypto yet. Let's go all the way back to like 2012 and that little situation where maybe a friend or a friend of a friend you're at a party. I don't know. And somebody talks about Bitcoin, they bring it up and they mention how it might be a good investment or you're just talking about what is it, this digital currency that you can buy. Maybe you blew it off. It doesn't make any sense to you. But then we can also go for the aspect of uh, what happened since 2012 to now. So you're talking Bitcoin around five dollars and these are just estimates. So five dollars back in 2012 is what it would have cost you to get one Bitcoin. Could have started with that. In 2012, Bitcoin cost $5. Yep. 2020, Bitcoin now costs $50,000. But you're not too late. Here's why. That could be the intro as an example. Okay. 
I can tell exactly now that we're a minute in, I know exactly what happened. This person did not write a script. Yeah. There, there was, yeah. or if you did, it, cause it didn't seem like you did because you're kind of thinking of the story, like off the top of your head, like let's say you're at a party and you know, and, or wherever you are. So uh, writing a script would have helped a lot, even just bullet points, breaking down like what you're going to be talking about for yourself. Cause there's this video is a minute in and we're like, we've not explained what cryptocurrency is just that it used to be cheap and now it's not, which is fine. It would have been like Rob said, a good way to intro the video, but you know, you said, what is cryptocurrency? That's the pitch of this whole video in the title and thumbnail. I know that Bitcoin is a thing, but if I want to know what it is, why it is as your, as your title says, why buy it? Like I'm a minute and 30 in and I don't have any of that information and there's no promise that I'm going to get it. I'm kind of mm -hmm. wondering it now. I'm in a minute in and I'm like, are you just going to talk about the timeline of cryptocurrency? You know, maybe you're going to go in between 2012 and 2022 now and talk about, and then Ethereum came along and like, I, I don't need to know that. Like, so there's, there's a big disconnect. And I think what would have helped here, and I hope we're not being too brutal. I do apologize for making it seem that way, but <laughs> we're two hours in, we've, we've seen a lot of intros already. <laughs> yes. But this is, I think like, this is a really good example of something we see so often. So I think that's why I'm lingering on it. You know, see, it, the, the thumbnail and the title are, are, are really good and compelling and engaging. And then the first minute is just, it felt a little excruciating from what was promised. Like, mm -hmm. let's see, can we find um, somebody who does this? Mr. Who's a boss. All right. He's probably going to describe this brilliantly or like really engagingly so let's let's watch the first minute of this video all right bitcoin blockchain dogecoin ethereum nfts everyone is talking about cryptocurrencies right now but good lord what does all of it mean so welcome to the one video that will take you from crypto noob to crypto genius i'm going to leave so that was 13 seconds in what it is why it keeps becoming more important what i've actually invested in myself and the dark side of it Okay, so when society was in its early stages, <gasps> there was no such thing as money. We'll call this stage one. The only way to buy something off someone was to go up to them and be like, oh, I really like your horse. I'll trade you my cat for it. Sorry, Milo. I never trade you. But the issue with a system like that is that- I will watch this forever. You might be perfectly happy to give up your horse. You just might not want a cat. So that trade will never happen. But that's where currency came in. Stage two, coins. So he's doing a real beginner guide here. He's talking like, like gold and silver currency before that, before getting into Bitcoin. You've heard of the yeah. British pound, right? Well, but that's the way to do it, I think. You reckon? Pound literally mm -hmm. just be one pound of silver. We're, we're talking about something that's supposed to replace traditional money, you know? Yeah. So it, starting with that premise of like, okay, we used to just trade animals for an other animals. Now we can't, that's not really practical. So that's where currency, like breaking down that timeline is helpful. Um, I think it's, it is a way you can explain what cryptocurrency is. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take nearly as long to get to that, those descriptions. He was a minute in and it already uh, started to get us onto the root of, of the cryptocurrency um, as opposed to, as opposed to this video. And he had a kitten. I think maybe we should um, cut this channel a, a little bit of slack and maybe watch one more just to see if we kind of repeat this style of introduction because these videos are even longer. Again, the thumbnail is good. Crypto cash, what to buy now. All right. I th again, I think that's a, it, it, it's a good setup. Mm -hmm. Let's watch the first 30 seconds. Welcome back, all. I hope you're doing well. Despite how the markets are going, I still hope you're doing fine. Uh, we're all bearing through this at the same time. So just remember that, you know, with everything happening with the overall markets, both crypto and stocks, the craziness with Luna, UST losing its peg. So all kinds of stuff has been happening over this past week and even a little before when the market started to drop. So just realize uh, you aren't alone in this. You're in the same boat with me, whether, you know, I know maybe I haven't lost as much as I so I think what he's trying to explain here is a shared um, feeling and emotion to the story. But I think that could have been done in five seconds. And I think you're right, Dan. This is the idea of he's pressing record and he's talking to camera without a script and with no editing. Mm -hmm. And this is what we end up with. A video that's 25 minutes long. 
but it probably contains four to six minutes of valuable information with other people but we're still in the same market and we're all suffering the same way stocks are down as well so we're all there just realize you got to breathe and you got to look long term and uh try to find that path forward so this video is going to be about what i'm going to do me so at 46 seconds this video is going to be about personally uh the path i have forward you know what i'm going to invest in what i'm going to do to weather this storm so I think during these periods, you have to look at what's going to be long term for you as an investment. And I'm saying that from the perspective of this is going to be focused on crypto, but even in stocks, you do that. So what do you think? That I, I think there's a there's one element to it that I like in that you are commiserating with people who are, you know, potentially they've lost a lot of money and they're looking for some answers. And, and you're like, look, man, I get it. They're like we all lost a whole bunch of money. It's been a bloodbath like. I totally like I see that, but you kind of drag that part out so long that I'm not getting the answers. It's like, oh, OK, cool. Like this person gets it like they're in the same boat I am. So but they know something that I don't clearly because they made this video. So it just it feels like we're just kind of chugging along. OK, when are we going to when are we going to get there? You're going to tell me not now, not yet. 48 seconds. OK, I'll wait a little bit more. OK, we're a minute in. Are we going to get there? No, it's still a personal story. So it's it's where we got to write. I think writing is this person's like next thing. It's sitting down like your titles and thumbnails are doing awesome. Now it's time to sit down and write out your videos and really and then go to bed and come back the next day. And I didn't mean to say it like rude, but like go walk away from it and come back and like then chop edit before you record chop that script up you know get it to be as short as possible going back to the concept again of dialing up to a 11 or dialing down like the the titles and the thumbnails promise like a, a certain volume of eight or nine and then within 30 seconds of being in the video you know the volume feels as if it's like two or three it, and as you were saying, Dan, like in terms of an engaging person in front of camera, it, it didn't feel like there was person that had the energy or or the, the engagement of the audience. And I appreciate completely that mm -hmm. being in front of camera is can for some people be a a challenging experience and um, creating you know, a positive body gestures and 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 talking at a certain cadence and with a certain level of enthusiasm that can be very different when you're talking to a lens as opposed to a, a human being because it feels like you're just talking to an inanimate object so as well as maybe the scripting side of this the planning um i think that in itself is going to give you more confidence in front of camera but maybe going on to skillshare or looking at charisma on command on youtube and trying to identify some simple um, on-camera personality traits that can just uh, notch your level of engagement and excitement up will be something to to research as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, best of luck. I, I think I think you're somebody who understands a topic that's very complicated, and that in itself has yeah, value. Yeah, I think there's no doubt of that, isn't there? There's a mm -hmm. an informed creator who is sharing their experiences with an audience but it's just not done in a, a very engaging and exciting way. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. That's the live stream. You all can go home now. Uh, thank you for being here. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Rob appreciates it. And uh, yeah, we'll be back Tuesday with channel audits Friday, right? Rob, there's something come out Friday. For yes. Us to watch. Uh, so a video about reused and repetitious content. Um, uh, people ask me about this all the time. And so I've tried to put together some answers uh, to help you um, tackle that very challenging aspect of YouTube, especially for monetizing your content when you're using other people's uh, music and, and videos and whatnot. Especially interesting for first list channels, I would I would say. There you go. All right, you're still here. I don't know why I said you can go home. You're like 300 of you that are still here. We're done now. Like we ended the live stream. Like we're done. No, I'm off to the toilet. Then. See you later. Bye, everybody. You can. Why is nobody leaving? Rob left. Even the host, one of the hosts, is gone.
and we're just chilling. There's a secret coming. The The secret is that you should go make videos now. That's the secret. Why is everyone still here? Oh, I forgot to put this page up. There we go. This this makes it more clear. See what happens. See what happens when you plan out your outros. If you are, by the way, looking for more value, uh, there's a lot of videos on our channel. See, I didn't plan this part out, but I could push you to another video right now, which would be really smart of me. But I didn't do that, did I? I, I didn't have that video ready. You could go watch my video from this week. It did really well. It got a one out of 10. I'm still very proud of that. And I highly recommend it here. I'm going to grab the link for those of you who for some reason refuse to leave. There's nothing left for you here. Go. I'm just going to put this link in there a few times. Go there. Like that's a great video. You're going to get a lot out of that video. If you, if you leave here and go check it out. So go ahead. Go ahead. Bye everybody. You can go.